Hey, this is John Gallagher talking to you live from the San Diego Comic-Con. I have a couple fun interviews that I did. I uh, was not able to hook up with Rich and Jamar via uh, simulcast and through the uh, podcast conference call, but wanted to get these up just as soon as possible. We'll be having another podcast very soon to discuss all of Comic-Con, all the fun we had, but in the meantime, enjoy these Cool interviews I did with some very neat people at Comic-Con. This is John Gallagher live at the San Diego Comic-Con. Uh, it is Saturday morning and things are already crazy here. I'm with Tom Zoller from Miracle Press. He does a fun book called Love and Capes and some other things as well. Uh, some people might recognize his name from uh, Buzz Boy where he colors letters and does all things cool. So Tom, uh, tell us a little bit about Love and Capes and, and uh, all the new things you're doing. Love and Capes is a superhero romantic comedy. It's about a superhero who says, I love my girlfriend, I'm going to tell her that. But if I tell her that, I have to tell her everything. So is there ever a good time to tell your girlfriend you have x-ray vision? What does she do when she finds out you can crush coal into diamonds? Things like that. Um, the book's been going on for about four years now. Issue 13 came out for Free Comic Book Day. And starting early next year, the book's moving to IDW. Now, they actually did the collection for you of Love and Capes, right? You didn't publish that yourself, or did that go out through IDW? The collections went out through IDW, and they've been doing just a gorgeous job putting out the trades. And then when issue, after issue 13 came up, I said, hey, would you guys like to publish the regular run of the book? And uh, apparently they were drunk because they said yes. <laughs> well, that's great. And then uh, do you find that you have a, a big following online? Uh, what do you do to promote... Uh, we, a lot of things we talk about on Comic Book Diner deal with how do you promote your book? What are the cheapest and best ways to do it in, the, in today's digital age? My general theory is that if it doesn't cost me money, there's no reason not to do it. So I Twitter, I actually write some of it on Twitter. Recently I had a scene where somebody had to be drinking a cup of tea, and I'm not a tea drinker, so I needed to research it, and I Twittered about what kind of tea should it be, and people gave suggestions, and I got a good one from that. Oh, that's great. I do Facebook, I have a blog, I, I try to, I've got things set up fairly well between TweetDeck and my blog engine where I can post to one or two places and everything gets done. And then I also do local promotions like um, there's a radio station by me, Magic 105, it's the big radio station in Cleveland where I'm from, and I am their on the scene reporter here at Comic Con and I've been sending them photos and they've been talking about it on the air every day. Oh, fantastic. And Tom, you've done other comics as well. Uh, is Love and Capes the one that has been most popular for you? Are, are you you uh, also did a book called Raider, and that was much more of a, a realistically drawn story. But uh, what, you know, what are the differences and what are the pluses and minuses of each? Raider was an action-adventure book. Um, there's so much I did wrong on that, and I can't tell what it is. Love and Capes is a much simpler pitch. I can tell you what Love and Capes is in 10 seconds where Raider was alias meets pretender, good guy, bad guy, spy organization. That was a lot more difficult to get across. Also, I think that I'm good at hitting the outside fastball and humorous Darwin Cook type illustration is my outside fastball. I was outside my zone on Raider. Not that I can't do that, but it wasn't enough where I wasn't good enough at that to come out of the box and get a following the way I have with Love and Capes. Well, that's a big talk that I've had with people of, you know, what is your con pitch? How do you promote your book? And uh, I've often said if you can't describe it in two sentences, it's people are going to lose interest. And I noticed that when you described Love and Capes, you didn't even mention it's this meets this. It, you were able to describe it in a way that anybody on the street would understand, even if they didn't know who Superman was or, or Spider-Man or any of that. Uh, and Raider, you immediately brought up you know, different properties, and do you find, uh, it, have you honed your pitch down over the last four years, or did you pretty much have it from the start? I think I've honed it over the first couple years. At this point, it's become hardwired into my brain, and I keep wanting to change a word here or there just to keep it fresh, but I keep not being able to do it. I've, I think I've kind of hit the right pitch on it, and I'll refine it if I come up with something funnier, but so far, that's been the one that's worked. That's great. And what are the shows that you would uh, suggest to someone who's just starting out? I mean, San Diego is a great show for exposure, and I, I know that there's a, often people come here because there's a lot of Hollywood interest that comes out of it. Uh, are there any great small shows that you would suggest to people as a way to sort of uh, get yourself known, or would you suggest go right up to the big shows? I think it's good to do a mix, and some of it's based on your budget and your capabilities. San Diego is a great show to do, but it's going to involve airfare and shipping and you have to be ready for that. And you're not necessarily ready for that your first time out of the gate. I do Baltimore Comic Con, I do Mid-Ohio Con, which is a local show for me. At this point, I think San Diego is the only show that I get on a plane for, although I'm planning on doing Emerald City next year. Really, I've heard great things about Emerald City. I was actually considering that myself. Is, that, it, is it based on word of mouth, or you know, what is it that makes Emerald City so attractive to you? 
it's uh, three things. One is word of mouth about the show has been really good, and I've noticed that comic book companies are making announcements at the show, which means they think it's a big show. Uh, I do have relatives out there that I can go visit, and um, the I am recently single, so I don't have to justify doing as many shows. You hear that, ladies? He's single. <laughs> it's like talking about David Cassidy in Teen Beat Magazine. Uh, I like long walks on the beach and the comedy stylings of Doctor Who. That's great. Well, Tom, uh, San Diego, again, is, is known as the show where a lot of Hollywood properties uh, are discovered or, or things that got, end up in Hollywood. Have you ever been approached by any of the production companies because of San Diego, or have you found that it's better to uh, try to reach out to those companies away from a show? I've gotten more exposure just from doing San Diego. I've had a couple companies talk to me. New York was actually the other show where I... I met some film people that I was... The New York Comic Con? Yeah, the New York Comic Con, where uh, I did some business with them for about a year. Now I've got an agent, which came directly out of San Diego, and it's nice because I know that I'm an idiot when it comes to film stuff, so it's good to have somebody who knows what they're doing. But from San Diego a couple of years ago, I pitched Disney on doing the book as a sitcom. Um, it didn't go anywhere, but it was the, it's the first time I got called up to the majors, and... It's nice to, to play in that field. That's great. You've used a couple of baseball references. Are you a baseball fan? No, I'm an Indians fan. <laughs> That's great. Well, this has been John Gallagher with Tom Zoller at the San Diego Comic-Con. Uh, check out Love and Capes. And, uh, Tom, what is your website if anyone wants to check out your stuff? My website is loveandcapes.com, all spelled out, L-O-V-E-A-N-D-C-A-P-E-S. Uh, I'm on Twitter at, at loveandcapes. And, uh, yeah, you can find me both those places. And I, I see on your banner you're also a Harvey Awards nominee. I am a Harvey Awards nominee. I uh, was nominated for Best Coloring for Buzz Boy, or NASCAR, lettering for NASCAR Heroes, I'm sorry. And I was nominated for Best Cartoonist, uh, and I lost to some guy named Al Jaffe that apparently has been Who? A yeah, it, Mad Magazine. I mean, do they still publish that, really? Uh <laughs> No, he's phenomenal. If you got to lose to somebody, that's the guy you want to lose to. That's great. And you were nominated for Love and Capes as well, for yeah. Best Artist or Best, Best Cartoonist? Cartoonist? Best Cartoonist for Love and Capes. So for three different books, you got nominated for Harvey Awards. That's awesome. That's yeah. great. Well, thanks so much for talking with us, and uh, we'll see you in Baltimore. All right. See you there. This is John Gallagher live from the San Diego Comic-Con with Scott Shittlewood from uh, Red 5 Comics. And Scott, what are the products that Red 5 sells and, and uh, produces? Well, we're best known for Atomic Robo. We got nominated for two Eisner Awards for it, Best Limited Series and Best Colorist. If you like robots punching things, robots punching giant ants, robots punching Nazis, robots metaphorically punching Stephen Hawking, then it's going to be right up your alley. Well, that sounds great. Now, what are the books that you work on yourself? I did, worked on a title called Afterburn, along with Paul Inns, the co-owner of Red 5 Comics. It's kind of Indiana Jones meets Mad Max. A solar flare hits the day side of Earth and wipes out Europe, Africa, and Asia. And these follows, the story follows a group of treasure hunters that go and raid what's left behind. We actually sold the movie rights to this title, and it's uh, been picked up by uh, the producer of I Am Legend, The Fast and the Furious, and Green Hornet, and Tobey Maguire as well. And you do Drone, uh, Abyss is a book that you publish. Cool. Uh, it seems like you've had a lot of uh, creators who've come and started at Red 5 who are, you know, have come to acclaim while at Red 5. Why is that? Uh, well, Did I ask a tough enough question? Uh, they're, just, they're just that awesome. They're that good. Yeah. Well, you know, and, and the, the bigger comic companies are wrecking the ta recognizing the talent. Wrecking. <laughs> they're recognizing the talent of our creators. For example, the writer of Atomic Robo, Brian Clevenger, was just hired by Marvel to write an ongoing Captain America series uh, set in World War II. So, and then um, they, uh, the artist on Atomic Robo has drawn um, uh, some Iron Man comics, and uh, various of our other creators are also working for the larger comic companies as well. So, well, uh, everybody from my podcast knows that I'm a big fan of fun comics, and because that's what I do, but I, also what I like to read, and that's one of the things that makes me a fan of Red Five. Uh, was that a conscious decision when you started publishing that that was the kind of books you were going to be doing? It sure was. You know, we wanted to get some titles that we enjoyed ourselves, stuff that we would buy as comic fans. I mean, we're in the comic shop every week buying comics ourselves. So, uh, you know, something that was light, something that was different than what everybody else was doing, you know, get, departing from the dark, grim and gritty stuff and just having fun, you know, a adventure, humor, uh, you know, stuff that we'd want to see on a movie screen as well as uh, in a comic book as well. 
Great. And then I guess one thing that we do with uh, the Comic Book Diner podcast is we talk a lot about aspiring creators and what shows are the best ones to set up at when they're first starting out. But uh, I guess I would ask at, at Comic-Con, what is the best way to uh, promote yourself if you're walking around looking, trying to find a publisher? You, I know you have a lot of people come up to you at the booth and, and ask if they can you know, show you their stuff. And what would you suggest to people? Uh, uh, Comic-Con is so crazy that, you know, you don't have a lot of time to sit there and go over their their pitch or their art or everything. So the best thing to do is to get the contact information for some from someone at the publishing company and then contact them after the show at a later date when it's a little quieter, they have time to look through it. But, you know, use the show to make a face-to-face -face contact, let them know who you are, recognize you, so that when you do contact them later, they remember you. And that would be my major piece of advice. Don't expect to sign a contract on the floor of the, con the convention center. Right, and that's and actually, you mentioned that your one book has been optioned and is going to be made into a movie. Possibly, uh, do, is that something that came about because of being at Comic Con, or is that something that you did at another show, or or was it like you said, contacting you know off off the show floor? The way it worked is we had copies of Afterburn printed up early. We sent them to retailers all over the U.S. We called the retailers, said, can we send you samples of our stuff? They said, sure. Well, most of them did. <laughs> and uh, then we, uh, what happened was our, the comic of Afterburn was sitting next to the register, and um, an agent from CAA walked in, saw it, flipped through it, said, this looks like a great comic, and uh, contacted us. And uh, the rest is history. We made a deal. There was a little bit of a bidding war in Hollywood over it and everything. Oh, great. So... That's the thing. You got, uh, you know, you can go through the retailers. Just do the legwork. I found a listing of indie-friendly retailers online, and I just went down that list and started calling them and uh, sending them our our titles. And uh, that was as good as uh, as anything for getting it picked up. That, that's great. Well, now I had discovered Atomic Robo in the comic shop. Uh, I think, did you do a free comic book day edition to promote it originally? We did, yeah, and that's been a really great way to get word out about our title. I mean, the best thing for selling your comic is to give a sample of it to someone, and free comic day is a great way to do it. It goes to a lot of comic shops, and uh, it's one of the most effective advertising tools an indie publisher can have. Well, I, I've, I've been right beside you at the show uh, promoting my book, and I noticed a lot of people came up and said, I discovered Atomic Robo through, uh, through I, iTunes, That's right. and you had, a, I think, a free promo, and how has uh, iTunes and iPad and iPhone been as far as promoting and even for sales for you? It's been fantastic, and it's just getting more and more so. What's great about it is you can offer the first issue of a limited series for free, and then it just gets downloaded like crazy because everybody wants to see a, get a free comic. Then they read it, they fall in love with it, and then they go pick up the subsequent issues. And, you know, we have pro we've probably distributed a hundred times more copies of Atomic Robo number one digitally than we ever did in the comic shop. So, I mean, that's you're talking Marvel kind of numbers for an indie comic. And that's by digital distribution. So the digital distribution is really great for independent comic publishers and, uh, you know, Everybody should be taking advantage of it if they can. And then, you know, I know that there are some uh, people who will say, well, that, that could be sapping sales out of the comic shop. Do you think that that's the case, or do you think that we're actually reaching a new audience with that medium? What we found is people read it on the iPhone, and then they come and want to pick up the trade. So we found that, you know, a lot of people were sending to the comic shops. And then the others that, you know, aren't going to the comic shops never would have gone anyway. So we're, we're reaching two different worlds. That sounds great. And what's your website so people can come and see all the cool things you do? It is red5comics.com. Red, the number five, comics.com. And I have to ask, is Red 5 a Star Wars reference? Oh, well, yeah, I've, I've been told it was a Battlestar Galactica reference, but, uh, but we are Star Wars fans at, at Red 5. And I, I uh, was one of the founders of a Star Wars fan site called TheForce.net, and Paul was with us there and then went on to work for Lucasfilm during the prequels, so he ran StarWars.com, so, you know, that should tell you the kind of tone we have in our comics, you know, we're Star Wars fans and that, you know, lighthearted sense of adventure is in the films and it's in our comics as well. That's great. Well, this has uh, been John Gallagher with Scott Chitwood from Red 5 Comics, and you can check out their site at red5comics.com.
Hey, it's John, live at the San Diego Comic-Con 2010, and I am sharing the booth, as I've told many people, with the Don't Eat Any Bugs Productions people. Uh, that By people, I mean Ray Friesen. Hi, Internet. Hi, Internet. <laughs> who's, our, uh, who's the main creator behind uh, uh, a slew of funny comics. And, Ray, I'll just let you describe what you do. All right. I do all sorts of silly things. If you're a kid and you like adventure and pirates and penguins and all that sort of thing, I am the guy for you. Now, what if you're not a kid? If you're not a kid, but you're still a kid at heart and you enjoy laughing at silly things, then you're also going to enjoy my book. If you're a curmudgeon, I would advise you to read my books to decurmudgeonify yourself. Okay, and I've heard you describe the comics that you do as uh, Monty Python meets Disney. Now, uh, tell me a little bit about that. How'd you come up with that sort of that spiel to describe your comics? I've been doing shows and stuff like this for a while, and coming up with that spiel to get people to pay attention to you is tricky. Basically, people are walking past on their way to something, and you have to convince them of how awesome you are and why they need to stop and talk to you. So, you know, often if you're thinking about something, oh, it's Indiana Jones meets Batman, it's Terminator meets uh, Hello Kitty, you know, you have to come up with some quick way of describing what your thing's like, which doesn't always work. But that's the one that I've sort of come up with lately, is it's Monty Python meets Disney. The other cross is usually Simpsons meets Indiana Jones. Oh, that's good. Now, have you ever had a really bad one? Have you ever said, oh, it's this and this, and then you just, no one liked it? Or, or what's the worst one you've ever heard? Uh, let's see. I've sometimes saying Monty Python has worked against me. There's been some people who have gone, oh, we can't be having with that. And then often I have like my sort of like script in my head of things that I say to people. And so sometimes I get sidetracked and I say completely weird stuff, and I'm going, why am I saying these things? What's happening to me? <laughs> Uh, I've heard bad pitches before. I can't think of anything specifically that's horrible, but there's been stuff that I walk past and I go, uh-huh. But, you know, as long as people are excited and having fun, there is something for everyone. There's all sorts of different stuff. So I know what I like, but that doesn't mean you have to like it too. Well, that's great. Uh, and what is your latest book that you're doing now? I actually haven't had a book come out for a while. My most recent one was Cupcakes of Doom. I'm currently drawing two books at the same time. Uh, Top Shelf is publishing my collection of Pirate Penguin vs. Ninja Chicken. That's my weekly webcomic, so it's going to be half that stuff from the internet, given a polish and an edit because I spell things wrong. And then plus a brand new 50-page story of epic awesomeness. In addition to Pirate Penguin and Ninja Chicken, it also has Astronaut Armadillo and Ninja Squid. And they, I'm not going to give away the ending, but it has giant monsters and spaceships. Oh, that sounds really cool. Now, is this part, would this be a great sort of companion to Ali and Corgi, the, the different sort of kids-related books that Top Shelf does? Definitely. I think Top Shelf is trying to expand their kid-friendly line. And, you know, Owie has been very successful for them. Corgi, you know, it's starting to drum up this support of kids want comics. Kids love comics. And I'm pointing at John in a winkatorial manner. And there's not as many things immediately in their face that they know they can like. So I'm really excited that Top Shelf Bot, Pirate Penguin, Ninja Chicken is going to appeal to their fans. I'm hoping it's going to do great stuff for both of us. And, yeah, I'm thinking it's going to be great. It's weird. Owie has no words. Corgi has no words. Pirate Penguin has so much words. It's like they're talking at each other for 100 pages. But so you're, you're making up for Allie and Corgi. You're sort of filling in where they, they left off. Apparently. That wasn't really my plan, uh, but what, yeah. What's your, what's your website? My website is www.dontEatAnyBugs.com. Don't ask me why. It's a long story that I don't remember. Wow, I can't believe that no one stole that before. <laughs> no, actually, I should point out that someone, I told someone that I was going to be at your booth this weekend, and they said, you know what, I noticed that, because that was such a unique name, I actually thought, I'm going to have to go check that out, so I just want you to know that was really successful. So, uh, this is John, live at the San Diego Comic-Con 2010. There just are some people dead live at Comic-Con, because they're zombies, but he's live, I there, swear. There are a lot of zombies at Comic-Con, so uh, thanks, Ray, and we'll talk to you soon. Bye, don't eat any bugs. Well, those are just a couple of the interviews that I did here at San Diego Comic-Con. Uh, we'll be having another Comic Book Diner podcast with Rich and Jamar real soon, and we'll be discussing all the things that went on at Comic-Con, as well as the upcoming Baltimore Comic-Con, New York Comic-Con, all the Comic-Cons that you can uh, think of. So we'll cue the fake diner music and see you soon at the diner.